Hey Comets, I am back with chapter 13 of Frindle. Chapter 13 is called Ripples. But life did settle back to normal in Westfield. More leaves fell, Thanksgiving came, then the first snow, then Christmas and more snow. Fall and winter seemed to calm everything down and drive everyone into their own houses. Things were calmer at Lincoln Elementary School too. Frindle mania was over. That did not mean the word was gone. Not at all. All the kids and even some of the teachers used the new word. At first it was on purpose. Then it became a habit. And by the middle of February, Frindle was just a word like door or tree or hat. People in Westfield barely noticed it anymore. But in the rest of the country, things were hopping. Frindle was on the move. In hundreds of little towns and big cities from coast to coast, kids were using the new word. And parents and teachers were trying to stop it. What had happened in Westfield happened over and over and over again. Bud Lawrence couldn't have been happier. There were Frindle shirts and sunglasses and erasers and notebooks and paper and dozens of other items. The new line of Frindles imported from Japan were a big hit. And now they were talking of selling them in Japan and Europe as well. The checks that went into Nick's trust fund got bigger and bigger. Bud opened his own factory in Westfield to make Frindle baseball caps, which created jobs for 22 people. And in March, the town council voted to put a little sign on the post between the town's original name along Route 302. It said, home of the original Frindle. And Mrs. Granger? She seemed to have given up, or perhaps she had been ordered to. No one knew. Her poster about the forbidden word had quietly disappeared from the bulletin board, and kids were not staying after school writing sentences anymore. It was business as usual, except for one thing. Everyone in fifth grade got at least one word wrong on his or her spelling test each week. Every week, the first word at the top of Mrs. Granger's list was pen. And each Friday morning of the spelling test, every kid spelled it F-R-I-N-D-L-E. Nick was sort of a celebrity for a while. Everyone had seen him on The Late Show, Good Morning America, and two or three other TV shows. John and Chris and all his friends kept asking what it was like to ride in a limousine. After a week or two, though, it was old news and everyone seemed to forget and move on. The only person who couldn't quite forget was Nick. And that was chapter 13. And it was such a short chapter, we're going to keep moving with chapter 14. Bonus. Chapter 14 is called Inside Nick. On the outside, Nick was still Nick. But on the inside, it was different. Oh, sure, he still had a lot of great ideas, but now they scared him a little. For instance, Nick learned in social studies class that people who buy stuff are called consumers. If consumers stop buying, stores and shops and restaurants go out of business. Then, boom, a new idea hit him. All the kids loved lunchtime, but the awful part about lunch was the eating part, school food. And the food was never a surprise. You had to smell it all morning and then go eat it. The food was always bad. Well, thought Nick, the school cafeteria is sort of a restaurant, isn't it? And the students are the consumers, right? And we don't really have to buy our lunches there, do we? Nick could see it all. He would get all the kids to bring their lunches from home every day until the ladies who made the lunches cooked better food. He was sure those women didn't cook food like that for their own families. They're, the kids were the consumers with a dollar thirty-five in their pockets. And until the food was better, that's where their money would stay. Great idea! Nick was sure it would work, and he got all excited about it. But then Nick remembered what had happened with Frindle. It stopped him cold. He was sure that if all the kids stopped buying lunch, sooner or later, someone would figure out that it was all Nick Allen's idea. He'd get in trouble. People would write about it in the newspaper. The principal would call his parents. Anything could happen. So for the first time in his life, Nick kept a good idea to himself. He never even told John or Chris. And that changed Nick. His mom was the first to notice. Are things okay at school, honey? She asked one day early in March. He had seemed kind of down, a little sad. It worried her. Sure, said Nick. Everything's fine. Everything okay with your friends? They haven't been hanging around here very much. Mom, honest, everything's fine. It's winter. Everybody's really busy with hockey and basketball. That's all. And Nick went to his room and shut the door. Mrs. Granger noticed the change, too. The clever little rascal who had looked looked her in the eye and said, but I really don't have a Frindle with me. That boy wasn't in her class anymore. 
Now a quieter, more careful Nicholas Allen came into class every day. He did all his work perfectly, didn't speak unless he was called on, didn't laugh or joke with his friends like he used to. School would be over in a few months and it seemed like there was nothing she could do to help him. Toward the end of the year, Nick remembered the letter that Mrs. Granger had asked him to sign on the back when the Frindle business was just getting started. The chess game was over, so he was expecting to get that letter from Mrs. Granger any day. But all spring it didn't come, so he thought she must have forgotten about it. Nick was afraid to bring it up, but he was, he was dying of curiosity. So on the last day of school, Nick knocked on Mrs. Granger's classroom door. She was straightening up textbooks on the bookcases below the windows. Without turning around, she sang out, Come in! Nick said, Hi, Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger stood up and turned to face him. Oh, it's you, Nicholas. I'm so glad you stopped by. I've been meaning to talk to you, and this will save me having to send you a letter this summer. Nick gulped and said, That's why I came, the letter. Mrs. Granger looked puzzled for a half second, and then she said, Oh, that letter! Then she paused. You will recall, Nicholas, that I said I would send you that letter when all of this was over. And it's not over. It's not? Nick tilted his head to one side and asked, When will it be over? Mrs. Granger smiled and said, Oh, believe me, Nicholas, you'll know when it's over. I wanted to talk to you about something else. She walked across the room and stood about two feet from him. Nick had grown during the year, and their eyes were almost on the same level. Nick noticed that the, the eyes were softer, but just as powerful. I've noticed that you've been quiet for the past few months. You know, Nicholas, you didn't do anything wrong this year. I know a lot of things happened, and a lot of things were said, and you must have had some difficult days here and there, but your idea was a good idea, and I've been very proud of the way you behaved most of the time. Nick was embarrassed, but Mrs. Granger kept on talking. And Nicholas, you have great things to do in this life. I'm absolutely sure you do. And you mustn't let a few hard days trick you into clamming up. Then Mrs. Granger reached out and shook Nick's hand and looked him in the face. Her eyes were turned up brighter than Nick had ever seen them before. She said, Nicholas Allen, I have enjoyed having you as a student. Now you go out there and have a wonderful summer, and I expect to hear remarkable things about you, young man. Mrs. Granger watched Nick start to leave, but before he got to the door, he turned and said, Thanks, Mrs. Granger. You have a great summer, too. Then he grinned and said, and don't forget to buy some new Frindles for next year. Thanks to the little talk with Mrs. Granger, along with a healthy dose of summer vacation, Nick made a full recovery. He was proud that he made up a new word, and he enjoyed thinking about all the commotion it had stirred up. That one little word had made fifth grade a year to remember. Before he started sixth grade, Nick was Nick again, and all through junior high and high school and college, he proved it. For example, two years later, all the school cafeterias in town were serving delicious food at least four days a week, all because of Nick the consumer. And the state superintendent of schools had made a special trip to Westfield to learn why this little town had the most successful school lunch program in the state. And in high school, well, the stories about Nick's other adventures could go on and on and on. But that would delay the end of this story, the one that started when Nick was in fifth grade. Because the end of the story came later, ten years later, and what was happening to Nick's word during those 10 years? Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. Words don't work that way. Words either get used or they don't. And Frindle was being used more and more. It was becoming a real word. And that's the end of chapter 14. Remember, comments, please keep reading. I'll see you later this week with some more Frindle. I miss you.